All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our very first Academy session on Employee Center. We're really looking forward to today. My name is Allison French. I'm part of our product team here at ServiceNow. I'm also joined by Pooja. She's also part of our product team and Nikhil, who's part of our engineering team. And we will be leading today's session and answering your questions. And speaking of that, if you do have a question at any time throughout today's session, please post it in the Zoom Q&A. And notice here on the slide that we do have the Q&A panel highlighted in pink. Uh, just a friendly reminder, please do use that uh, Q&A panel rather than chat because it just helps us stay organized in terms of answering your questions. And it also gives other attendees who are on this webinar the visibility into what others have asked. So again, we'll be monitoring that throughout and we'll also have time at the end to take some of those questions live and discuss. Uh, and because this is our first Academy session on the topic of Employee Center, we wanted to talk about what you can expect for these sessions. So first and foremost, these sessions are for you. Um, these are really to bring our product to life and help our customers, our partners, and our community users better understand our product and how to build it. So please do ask questions and interact. We would love to hear from you. The other thing I want to highlight is that this is not just a presentation. So we will be using some slides today to go over some overview information, but we'll also be going into a live instance and we'll be doing a demo walkthrough as well as some live build to again really bring our product to life and dig in. And the other thing I want to point out is that we will be back next month. So this Employee Center Academy series will reoccur on a monthly basis and we're targeting November 17th for our next session. So we're really looking forward to next month already. And what's very likely is that if you registered for this session when you were in the Zoom web, uh, registration page, you likely registered for the other um, occurrences of this series. So we do hope to see you back next month. A couple of other things I want to cover before we officially dive in um, are some other resources that relate back to Employee Center. So Employee Center, of course, is very, very new. Um, it was released just in cadence with our Rome family release, which is, um, you know, looking back just a couple of weeks now to September 16th. And so um, on that release day, we put out a new Employee Center community forum. And so that's what we see on the left of this slide. Um, that's probably how you registered for today's session. You'll see that big banner for our Employee Center Academy, which is what we're in right now. Um, and you also see some other written resources that we have pushed out there. The thing I'd like to highlight is that we continue to grow this academy. And so we will continually be adding new articles and blogs and resources to keep you up to date on the latest with Employee Center. So if you haven't already gone out to our community forum, please go out there, access it, subscribe so you can get those updates. And just a navigation note, um, in case you haven't been there, if you go to our community site, which is just community.servicenow.com, you can search for Employee Center and filter your results, and that's an easy way to get to this forum. Another thing I want to point out is that we also now have an Employee Center YouTube playlist out on our ServiceNow community uh, YouTube site. And so um, we just stood this playlist up a couple of days ago and we uploaded our first video. And uh, the first video is really focused on an overview of Employee Center. And so it's actually Pooja and myself kind of going back and forth for about 30 minutes um, to really dive in on that topic of Employee Center at a high level. Um, and you can access that video and the YouTube playlist from our community, but I also wanted to connect the dots that were also out on YouTube. And in fact, um, today's session is being recorded and we'll post that to the YouTube channel and our community forum. So if you um, want to watch back today, that's where you can find the recording. All right, so here's our agenda for today. Um, our topic is going to be helping you understand curated experiences. And so in terms of our flow, we're going to start with an overview of Employee Center. Then we're going to go through an overview of what curated experiences really is and what that means. And then those two items will be in slide format. And then what we'll do for the live walkthrough and build, we'll actually be going into instances. So Pujo will walk us through a live walkthrough of those curated experiences that we'll first talk about in slide format. And then I'll walk us through the build portion where we're actually gonna create a new taxonomy and associate it to the employee center. Um, so without further ado, we will officially jump into our employee center overview. And where I like to start with this is by taking a step back and talking about the why behind employee center. So we know that our customers need a modern and unified portal. And that portal really needs to easily scale from service delivery needs all the way to what we like to call employee destination or modern intranet needs. And so if you look at the visual that's kind of in the middle of this slide, this depicts uh, a common customer employee experience journey. Um, so if you look over to the left, sometimes this journey starts with more so this concept of employee service. 
And not always, but often, um, we see customers starting with um, a single service delivery portal. And this typically starts with one function. That uh, function might be you know, IT or HR. If we start to look more towards the middle of this journey, um, we see what we call an enterprise service delivery portal. And so what we mean here is we're adding in additional functions. So maybe it's not just IT anymore, or maybe it's not just HR anymore, you're adding other departments like workplace, legal, procurement, and more to really offer more of that enterprise service delivery experience and that one place to go for service needs. And then finally, if you look all the way over to the right, um, we start to get into this um, domain of um, employee productivity and engagement. And so that is really the genesis or the why behind employee center. Uh, and so this is really kind of adding on in addition to those service delivery capabilities that you would expect out of a portal. We're adding in those capabilities um, like employee communication and engagement. And so again, this is the why behind Employee Center. And so we now say that Employee Center is our new standard multi-department and dynamic portal for both service delivery and employee engagement both. Um, and there are two packages for Employee Center. We have Employee Center, which is on the left, and Employee Center Pro. And I'll start on the left. So with Employee Center, this is really unlocking those service delivery portal aspects that we talked about on the previous slide. So this is what enables employees to report issues, request items and services, find answers, complete to-dos across multiple departments. And just a quick note, when I say multiple departments, that of course depends on your overall licensing with ServiceNow and your entitlement to different areas like HR, IT, procurement, et cetera. Uh, now, if we look over to the right with Employee Center Pro, this is really what unlocks those employee communication and engagement capabilities. So it does everything that you can do on the left around service delivery, but again, it's adding in communication and engagement, and it's really transforming this portal into an employee destination site or modern intranet. And so again, in addition to being able to do all of the things that you see on the left, it also enables employees to really stay informed on news and events and find those cross enterprise answers. The other thing I wanna highlight is the note across the bottom of the slide. So Employee Center is actually one portal and it's packaged as two separate store apps. So again, Employee Center and Employee Center Pro. Um, and one thing that's important to highlight here in terms of this being a store app. So uh, most of you are probably familiar with our large family releases that happen about uh, twice per year that are named after major cities. Store apps are a new release vehicle for us that allow us to innovate faster and get you, those new innovations into the hands of our customers even quickly. Um, more so than what we can do with the family releases. And so it's exciting that Employee Center and Employee Center Pro are now available via the store. The other thing I wanna share um, is that Employee Center is actually a very much enhanced, repackaged and rebranded version of our Employee Service Center portal, if that is a term that you're familiar with. So this is kind of a, a timeline visual of what this means um, based on different uh, portals that you may have been aware of before Rome. So if we look kind of towards the top left of this timeline, um, go back in before, we did again have our Employee Service Center portal. Like I just mentioned, this has been enhanced and repackaged and rebranded as Employee Center Pro. And so this is available to our HR service delivery professional and enterprise customers, and it's also something that can be separately licensed. And so if previous to Rome, you had access to Employee Service Center, that means that you are entitled to Employee Center Pro. Now, if we look below that cut line, we also see service portal and employee center. Um, so what we now recommend is that um, for any customers that do not have that employee center pro license, they leverage employee center rather than service portal. So service portal is no longer recommended for new customer deployments. Really that, uh, that use case should be focused around employee center and again, employee center pro if you have that entitlement or license. Uh, this further brings to life kind of the fact that, again, there's one portal and Employee Center Pro really extends that standard Employee Center. So on the left, we see the standard Employee Center that's unlocking that multi-department service delivery experience. And then on the right, we see Employee Center Pro, which again is adding on that engagement and communication element. Um, I won't walk through all of the differences here that we see. Um, I'll, I'll kind of unpack that in a moment and talk through some of the main capabilities and widgets here. But again, this is just to demonstrate that it's one portal and Employee Center Pro is really extending that standard and adding additional capabilities. Um, so now I do wanna talk through some of the, the, the main components that we saw on that screenshot. And what I have here, this is actually the Employee Center Pro homepage, and we've labeled the specific widgets and capabilities that we just see on this slide that are for Pro only. 
So I'll walk through this at a kind of a high level. Um, in a moment, Pujo will be taking us through a lot more detail as it relates to curated experiences. Um, but one thing to point out is this new modern portal theme. So you'll notice there's a new, more modern look and feel to this portal, and that's because we have a new theme that has been applied. Immediately beneath the portal theme, we have the new content experiences widget. So you'll notice this is one of those um, pieces of functionality that is only available to Employee Center Pro customers. And this is really what unlocks those employee communication and engagement capabilities that I talked about a little bit earlier. So this is a new widget, um, and it's an enhancement on top of existing widgets that existed before this release that were compatible with campaigns or um, what we've now called them as content experiences and content publishing. And what's nice about this content experiences widget is that it allows you to very precisely target different audiences of your employee base and proactively surface them with the information that they need. And so it's a great way to deflect cases. It's a great way to proactively, you know, direct them towards knowledge. And it's also a great way to really proactively direct them to any tasks or to do's. And actually, that's what we see here in the screenshot. So in that new iPhone 12 upgrade available banner, you see that upgrade button. The nice thing is that that now can be associated with a to-do that is outstanding with the employee. Immediately beneath content experiences, again, I alluded to the fact of curated experiences being our main topic for today, so I won't steal the thunder and go too deep here. Um, but at a very high level, we have a new out-of-the-box taxonomy. And that new taxonomy drives several capabilities that we see here um, in this screenshot and that are noted. And Pooja will be walking us through the details of that in just a moment. In addition to that, um, another thing to point out is this new recommended for you widget. So that's kind of in the middle of the slide. And what this is doing is it's surfacing request items or articles to employees to really proactively give them, you know, articles or catalog items that would be pertinent to them. And for our HR service delivery professional and enterprise customers, that's actually driven by a machine learning algorithm. Also visible in this screenshot, we have the My Active Items widget. This really collates all of the active items that an employee may have. So in this screenshot, we can see that the logged in user has nine tasks, four requests, a couple of surveys. So again, this is really that active items widget that's really making all of that information easy for the employee to access. If we start to look over to the right, we have a couple more widgets. We have our quick links widget. Um, this is a widget that you can use to proactively surface, again, links that your employees may need to have quick access to. And just a quick plug for this widget, I really love this widget because it has a lot of different configuration options in terms of the look and feel. So in this screenshot, we see kind of the images and the labels, but there are a lot of options in terms of, of what that looks like on your portal. We also have a videos widget that's also for professional customers, and we also have a footer widget. And that footer widget is very configurable, so you'd be able to add your logo and your specific links accordingly. Of course, we just see the sample data here for ServiceNow. Um, one last thing I want to talk through before I hand it over to Pooja to really dive into curated experiences is what this means for customers. So depending on where you're at um, in your journey, this answer depends. And so I'm going to start over on the right because it's the easiest answer. So let's say you're a new customer or you're embarking on a new portal implementation. Um, the recommendation for you would be to, of course, deploy the latest employee center. So what you would do is after upgrading your instance to Roam, you would go out to the store and you would install the latest either Employee Center or Employee Center Pro app from the store, depending on your entitlement. Um, next, let's move to the middle. So let's say you're an existing Employee Service Center customer. So for you, this is actually an upgrade process, because if you remember before, I said that um, Employee Center is actually an enhanced and repackaged version of Employee Service Center. So what this would mean, again, is that after your, your uh, instance is on the fam, family release of Roam, you would go out to the store, install the Employee Center Pro app, and then you would then evaluate and opt in to any of the new Employee Center Pro pieces of functionality. And then finally, let's say you're a service portal customer. So the recommended path for our service portal customers would be to migrate to Employee Center to really take advantage of that new um, out-of-the-box experience that I just walked through. Um, and technically speaking, I do want to point out there is a second option here to continue using Service Portal and incorporate some of our specific employee center widgets into your existing Service Portal. And the reason this is technically possible is that Service Portal and Employee Center are part of the same tech stack. However, um, the one thing I do want to point out is that some of our new capabilities and widgets that we have with Employee Center are not quickly and readily you know, implemented on a customized Service Portal. Um, an example of that could be some of what we're going to be talking about with curated experiences. So that's really why that recommended path, if you are a service portal customer, is to migrate to Employee Center. 
All right. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass it over to Pooja, and she is going to walk us through curated experiences. So Pooja, over to you. Thank you so much, Alison. And uh, very nice to meet everyone of you on the call today. Um, I'm pretty sure what you heard right now may be a little bit of overwhelming. So I would highly encourage you to leverage our community to get more details on Employee Center and also watch the overview recording that we have posted on YouTube. Yeah. Now, I'll walk you through the curated experiences feature. And as Alison was talking about, this is one of our biggest features that we launched as part of our September release uh, for Employee Center. And uh, I have some slides, but uh, I, we will also do a live walkthrough. So all the slides and all the content that I will cover will, uh, will be covered um, in a live walkthrough as well. To just expand on the front end of curated experiences. So what curated experience is essentially doing is that it is creating experiences across the portal to make finding content and ex exploring content more employee centric. There are a bunch of different widgets, different pages and experiences that we have created, which are together called curated experiences. To give you an example, we have the mega menu navigation. So this is essentially the employee center header. And uh, um, when you click on the topics in that header, you see a nice two by two um, a matrix or a box open up in which you can explore all the different topics that are covered within that topic. Then each of these topics are also surfaces, surfaced up using um, a widget called popular topics widget, which is strategically on the homepage. So both these widgets are essentially doing is helping the end user um, get to know what is covered in this portal without having to go through too many clicks. With the mega menu, with just one click, they see what all is covered in HR. With popular topics, uh, the topics that are of most interest between their peers and, 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 um, and employees in general in the organization are kind of surfaced up automatically. So it's like a one click and they get the information that's most on top of their mind. And then when you get inside these topics, um, it's, it's, it creates an even better experience because what is happening is you are separating the need to, um, uh, excuse me, you are, removing the need to go into different pages to explore different kinds of content. So if I were a user and let's say I need help with something that's going on with my laptop, um, should I be going to service catalog to raise a request or should I be going to knowledge to find out what solutions are available that I can you know, self-serve? And users were often confused and had to go back and forth between these different pages and topics and, and it didn't lead to a good experience. But what we are doing with curated experiences is we're creating topic pages, which actually has content from different of, of different types surfaced in one single page. So if you would squish in this um, middle screenshot over here, you can see that there are articles, there are requests, there are quick links, there's employee communication, all of them together in, under a single page. This really helps create an employee-centric content discovery. And what I really like about curated experiences, the, the front end side of it, is that with the September release, we have also created um, um, a, a new store app for Now Mobile. And once a customers download that, they can actually see these topic pages rendered on the mobile experience as well. So it's the similar experience. It, it really helps create an omni-channel experience for the end user. So in the front end, this is this is a summary of it. Now, what I'm sure the question on your mind is, is this Employee Center or Employee Center Pro? So let me explain that. Both the widgets, Mega Menu and Popular Topics are actually available both on Employee Center and Employee Center Pro. We want all our customers to be creating portals that are employee centric in nature. That's why curated experiences in general is available for both the, the packages. The main difference is when you actually go in the topic pages, the nice looking banner that Alison spoke about, which is only pro, um, is something that's available in the topic pages as well. And to get these banners on the topic pages, one would need Employee Center Pro. And similarly, to get all the content pieces like videos, which are associated with the Employee Center Pro license, you would need to have Employee Center Pro. But everything else is available on Employee Center too. 
Now, let's talk about the back end of this. And again, I'll walk you through the instance so you will have a lot more details on it. The entire curated experiences uh, functionality is kind of driven out of what we call unified content taxonomy. To understand this, it's nothing but a collection of hierarchical topics that bring together all the different content types. So like requests, articles, employee communications, quick links, all of them are tagged into what, um, what out of box is a three tier structure. So you can think of it like IT, hardware, printer. So these are three tiers of topics and all the content that an organization has would be tagged to these topics. And these topics and the content tagged to these topics are essentially creating the experiences that we just walked through. The topics itself are surfaced on the mega menu and the popular topics, and the content that is tagged to them is surfaced on the topic pages. So you are actually tagging both catalog items, knowledge articles, quick links, and, and, and employee communications to a topic, and, and that the content that you have tagged in this format is actually ren getting rendered on the topic page. So the unified content taxonomy sits at the core of curated experiences. So if you want to adopt curated experiences, your first thought should be to how to, should be to create this unified taxonomy. And this is going to be the focus of our demo today. I, I kind of spoke about this, um, but just to double down on this, taxonomy itself is nothing but a collection of topics, right? Um, out of box, the taxonomy that we ship is called employee taxonomy. And you can see the top level collection of topics is what we call as parent topics over here. It could be IT, HR, workspace, any of those. And then you have this child topic structure, which is associated with each, each of the layers. Um, our recommendation is to not go beyond three tiers. You can, of course, configure more in the platform. But uh, the best practice is go up to three tiers, and you will see that uh, followed in the out of box taxonomy that we have shipped with the employee center as well. The example that I was talking about uh, just before is, is also visible over here. So, employee is the taxonomy, parent topic would be IT, the first level of child topic is hardware, and the, the next level of child topic is computers. You can imagine the same for HR and other, other topics. Now, to go deeper on the back end, so we do have this unified taxonomy that we spoke about. Um, the, when, you, when you will go in the instance, uh, you will see that it actually provides you the ability to have multiple different taxonomies. Um, it's nothing but just a structure that sits on top of all the content, and you can still maintain all the, all the topics and categories that you have within your catalog and the knowledge base this taxonomy is essentially just driving the front end of the portal. Then you have the content that is tagged with the taxonomy. Um, for the September release, uh, we have catalog items, knowledge articles, quick links, and communication content. Um, and in the upcoming releases, we will be adding additional content types that can be directly tagged with the taxonomy. The most important piece to know about in the um, curated experiences backend is the content taxonomy module. This is something that we shipped as part of the Rome platform release. So it's not directly tied with Employee Center, but this provides the ability or, or, or it, it has the data model and the framework to actually manage the taxonomies end to it. That includes editing them, creating them, including topics, tagging content, any, any of the activities that you can think of that uh, think for actually managing a taxonomy is actually handled based on the content taxonomy module. This will be a lot more clear when we are, when I'll actually go on an actual instance and show it to you. Uh, but remember this model that you really need this to be able to manage taxonomies. Now we have another thing to, in terms of theory, there's another piece that one should remember is that there's one new role that we have introduced for managing the taxonomy and two different user criteria that, that actually creates two different personas who are critical in, in this taxonomy management space. So first is the taxonomy admin. Now the taxonomy admin is almost like the owner of the content taxonomy module. So they have um, all the rights that you can um, associate um, or they can do, they have the superpower on the content taxonomy module. So they can do anything, any functionality within that. Then the taxonomy uh, admin has actually the ability to define or give the right of taxonomy manager to different set of people. And this is a user criteria, it's not a rule. So the admin is actually 
granting this this right uh, to a, a subset of individuals or different roles that they hold. And what the taxonomy manager can do is actually create topics within a particular taxonomy, tag content, assign taxonomy contributors. So this taxonomy manager is actually working just within a taxonomy. And then within that taxonomy, there is also a, an, a different persona, which is the content contributors. So content contributors cannot make any changes to the topic, but they can attribute a content type to a diff particular different topic. So they can actually contribute content to the taxonomy. This is an important structure to remember. Like the, these are the different players that you would need to make sure that you have rightly identified and engaged um, as you are thinking about managing your taxonomy. Now, with this, let's get into a live walkthrough. So let me just go on my instance. Okay, so this is the front end of um, a working employee center pro. So this is essentially what you get uh, out of box. Um, if you would see the header here, these are the parent topics that I was talking about. And if you would click on them, there's a nice two by two mid, uh, box that opens up and you can actually explore all the different topics within, within just the HR field. If you would scroll down as a user, all you right. can- So what I'm going to do is go into um, the employee center, which is what Pooja was just giving us a tour of. And she was talking about some of the components. So um, if I go down to this popular topics widget, which is where Pooja was explaining, um, this is again tied to this new unified taxonomy. And so how this is populated directly correlates to the taxonomy that you are using within your employee center portal. And so um, the nice thing about this is that this is actually dynamically generated. So these are topics that are built as part of our out of the box taxonomy. And the way these are surfacing um, is actually by popularity. So depending on the content that's tagged to these topics, and essentially the popularity or the number of views that those items are getting, whether it is you know, a knowledge article or a catalog item, those topics here are being surfaced directly to this widget. And so the nice thing about this is that this is dynamic and again, updates accordingly. Um, next, what I wanna do, I'm gonna go ahead and dive into one of these topics and just show you what a dynamic topic page really looks like. So I'm gonna click into onboarding. And um, like we mentioned, these dynamic topic pages do auto generate based on the taxonomy that you are using at your organization and the content that you've tagged to your taxonomy. Um, so Puju was alluding to this a bit earlier, but again, what we've done with the release of Employee Center is we have delivered this out of the box taxonomy experience. And so it has uh, topics and child topics and it has content tagged to it. So this content that we're seeing is some of our out of the box demo content that's been tagged to this topic of onboarding, as well as the subtopics that sit beneath um, onboarding. So again, this is auto generating and these topic pages do have kind of a standard look and feel and format. So across the top here, we can see that we see the label of the, the topic. Um, and so we also see this banner. Um, and a little bit later, when we get into the build and configuration of this, I'll actually show you exactly how this is set and how this is built, um, but know that that is flexible. Um, and beneath that, we also have this browse onboarding widget. And so what this is doing is it's allowing, uh, you know, employees to browse different things that have been tagged to this topic. So whether again, it's a request or an article. So we're seeing a lot of requests. If we scroll down and show more, we'll probably start to see some articles. There they are. Um, one really neat thing about this browse widget as well is the fact that you can actually um, pin things to the top. So let's say there's something that's very popular. Let's say that um, it's very common when an employee is trying to browse the topic of onboarding that they would really be looking into perhaps um, the new hire FAQs. Um, you would actually be able to uh, kind of pin that and feature that so it's appearing here at the top of this widget. And when it does that, it will actually have kind of a blue note there that shows that that has been um, featured. Um, so that's the quick tour of what this looks like from the portal view. Um, now what I'm going to do, and I'm just going to double check to make sure that Pooja is not back yet. Nope, she's not. Okay. Um, is I am going to uh, show what this looks like a little bit from the other side. So I'm going to flip back. This is the same instance, and I'm going to the fulfiller view. And what I'm going to search for is taxonomy. Um, and so here we see the content taxonomy module. And beneath that, we can click into taxonomies. 
Um, and what this actually shows is again, that delivered taxonomy that we have shipped. So it's labeled as the employee taxonomy. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and click into this and kind of give a quick tour. So this is the taxonomy. Um, and I'll walk through some of what Puja was describing earlier at a very high level as well. So um, we have the ability to set kind of who the managers are of this taxonomy. And like Puja mentioned in our slides, um, this is set by user criteria. Um, and so out of the box in this, um, what we're seeing here, we have given some certain roles access to that because again, it's associated to that user criteria. And this is something that you could very easily adjust at your organization to meet uh, the needs of who should really be you know, managing this taxonomy. Of course, we also have a description field. This is active and it, um, we have domain. Um, but what I wanna start showing you is um, some of these related lists. So we have child topics. And so um, Pooja had that slide that kind of explained the overall hierarchy of how we have kind of this parent and child relationship. And what we're seeing here is essentially kind of those top root topics. Um, so we see HR, IT, workplace. Um, and this depends on like the modules that you are using as a ServiceNow customer. And so we see HR, IT, and workplace right, right now. Let's say you're using legal or procurement. Those would also be, you know, topics that are available in this employee taxonomy. Um, now I'm actually going to click into one of these topics. I'm going to op open the record. Um, and let's walk through some of the components that we see here. Um, so of course we have the name of the overall topic. We have the taxonomy that it's associated to. And then again, we see this parent field. So this is what allows us to really create those parent-child relationships. Um, because this topic of HR is really at that parent root level, there's no parent associated to it. Um, then we have the ability to set an order. So this controls the display order. We have the ability to set a description. Um, and so we saw an example of what this looks like when we clicked into that example onboarding topic page and how that description surfaces. Um, and as I was mentioning earlier, when we were in the portal view, I said that you had kind of some flexibility in how that banner looks and whether maybe you're also using an icon. And so um, a little bit later when I um, get through this walkthrough and we flip over to kind of what it looks like to clone this taxonomy and create your own, I'll show that configuration process. But here we can see that we have an icon loaded as well as a banner. Um, and actually, Pooja, I think, are you back? I just heard somebody join. It looks like you're here. Yes, I'm back. Great. And I'm so sorry, everyone, about this. Um, no, no worries. I was able to just pick up and um, I what I did is I talked about the popular topics widget and I went into a dynamic topic page. So now I was giving an overview of kind of the taxonomy and um, what's available here. Awesome. And Alison, I think you can just continue sharing your screen so we don't have to, you know, I don't have to take the screen again. Um, Perfect. So uh, let me just go through. So you walked into the taxonomy pieces and that, you know, we can have multiple taxonomies over there. Yep. Yep. I showed them okay. um, what it looks like when you click into taxonomy, the fact that we have that delivered employee taxonomy. And so I'm kind of giving a tour before we um, go into what it looks like to clone that and create a new one. Awesome. So um, thank you so much, Alison. Now, um, if you would see, this is the HR topic within the employee taxonomy. And uh, um, if you scroll down here, there is the, you can see connected topics to it. You can see child topics that, um, no, sorry, connected content and child topics. Um, you can of course add new topics and uh, um, create, uh, create new, um, new topics that you want. Um, if you go in the featured content tab, um, not sure if Alison walked through this, but if you're on the topic page, the dynamic topic pages, you can actually highlight a, a given set of uh, content items as featured on that page. So if you, let's say you want users who are getting into benefits to first read about one or two knowledge articles that you have created, you can feature those not knowledge articles using this tab over here. Um, and then the quick links are again, external links or additional items that you can just, you want surfaced up on the right-hand side of the dynamic topic page. Now, um, if you go on one of the child topics, you would see, um, if you just scroll down, like on the top, you would see the third, uh, um, the third row here is the parent topic. It is automatically tagged to HR. When you were in the HR, you would notice that this field was left blank. 
because it is essentially the 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 high the top one uh, um, topic uh, or top top tier on the taxonomy topic structure. So you don't really need a parent topic defined there. So this is how it is knowing what is the structure. You have your it's literally a child parent relationships. Um, Alison, did you walk them through the roles and the content contributor piece on taxonomy? At a very high level, I talked about the fact that it's kind of at that user criteria level um, when you're looking mm -hmm. at this from the manager perspective. But if you want to talk a bit more about that, it probably wouldn't hurt. I think we I okay. saw a Q&A on that, so it wouldn't be okay. a bad awesome. thing. I did want to showcase what is out of box. So if you just go on the taxonomy page. Go back um, and just go hit yeah the eye icon over here yes um, I wanted to highlight that out of box when we ship the employee taxonomy we kind of put the catalog admin the catalog manager knowledge admin and knowledge manager roles um, within that taxonomy manager uh, user criteria so um, so essentially we assigned all of these people with, with this role the ability to manage a taxonomy. Um, we do expect once you do create your own taxonomy, you think about who you want to grant these um, this the taxonomy manager responsibility and then update this accordingly. Um, Alison, if you go out of this and show the content contributor field similarly. Mm -hmm. So again, this is also what you would notice. Just open the record. This is again a user, like, yeah, they hit the eye. Yeah. Yeah. So this is also a user criteria that you're defining. And out of box, we have the, the knowledge uh, catalog, the catalog builder, editor, and catalog editor roles um, assign the taxonomy contributor um, um, rights. So again, think about these roles and how you, who you want to grant them um, carefully when you are creating your taxonomy. And then the Content taxonomy module allows you to like, you know, browse through all the different topics that are created. So Alison, if you just go out, I'm actually referring to the very left column um, under this, yeah, for, further down. So um, the, like you can just browse through what are the different topics, what are the connected content, what are the quick links that I've created. These are just reference tables that, uh, that uh, you can access from here. The content configuration uh, tab, on the left is essentially where you are defining what are the basic um, um, or, or um, default icons and banners that you want to be associated with the topic in case you don't define it while creating the topic. So that, that kind of completes the overview of that content taxonomy module. Um, Alison, with this, I'll, I'll hand it back to you so you can actually show how like we expect customers to not just take this out of box taxonomy, but essentially use this out of box taxonomy as a starting point. So you're expected to clone it, um, modify it as per your needs and, and use that as your taxonomy. So Alison um, will walk through that. Perfect, thank you, Pooja. So um, I'm gonna give a quick tour of what this looks like if you were cloning and modifying the taxonomy in slide format. And then in a moment, we'll hop back into the instance and we'll actually walk through it live. So um, the first thing that you'll wanna do if you're on this taxonomy form is click that clone button or UI action in the top right of the form. Um, then what you'll see is a modal pop-up that asks you to provide a new uh, name for this clone taxonomy. Then from there, you can actually define and select, um, you know, who specifically should have that manager access. And again, that's controlled via, uh, via user criteria like Pooja and I were talking about earlier. Um, and then from there, you would actually be able to add or edit topics as necessary. Then once you've done that, there would be a couple of additional steps. So you would uh, want to deactivate this original taxonomy. You would want to associate your new taxonomy to Employee Center. And then depending on your specific requirements around search, you may have a couple of additional configurations that you would want to make. Um, so a couple quick notes and then we'll actually hop into the instance. So you can use AI search or Zing search with Employee Center. And by default, search is limited to content that is tagged to a topic in your taxonomy that's associated with Employee Center. Um, let's say, for example, if you wanted to remove that filter, you can adjust your search sources. And so depending on whether you're using AI search or Zing search, that looks a little bit different. 
So if you're using AI search, we see that on the left and we see that kind of condition builder, you'd be able to remove that condition and you would want to do this for knowledge and catalogs. And similarly, you see what this process looks like if you're using Zing search. So you would need to, where that red box is highlighted, pass an empty value there in place of that function that is being shown. All right, so now let me um, share my instance again, and then we'll walk through exactly what this looks like. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into that delivered employee taxonomy. And what I'm going to do is I am going to clone it and put in a name for my clone. Okay, and then what we'll do is we go back to that list view of taxonomies and we're gonna see our new clone created there. And what we'll see once we're able to click into that new clone taxonomy is that it's of course an exact replica of that out of the box employee taxonomy. So there it is, we see it, Taxonomy Academy. I'm gonna go ahead and click into that record. And it essentially looks identical, right? We see the same child topics. If we started to click through, the subtopics would be the same as well as the connected content. Um, let's pretend that I am a customer and at my organization, instead of using the term HR, we actually call that function global talent. Um, what you would actually be able to do in this clone taxonomy is come in here. Um, let's open that record and we could relabel this to global talent. Um, we could also make other modifications. So let's say we want to select a new banner image, um, et cetera. That is something that we'd be able to easily do from this view. I'm going to go ahead and save that uh, label change from HR to global talent. Um, let's also say that within global talent, we have a new child topic that we would like to create. So that process is pretty easy. Here within child topics, I'm able to just click that new button and I can um, you know, define a name for my new child topic. Um, and as you can see, it's already associated to that new clone taxonomy, and it's already associated to global talent as the parent, which is nice because of where I clicked in to create this new topic from. Um, you'll see some of the fields we talked about earlier, like order, field, et cetera, um, description. What I'm going to do is I'm going to upload a banner image, and I'm going to show um, what that uh, looks like from a configuration perspective for the topic page. So I just have a banner on my desktop I'm going to use here. Go ahead and upload that. Um, so now we have this new child topic that we've created. We've added a banner. Now I want to show you what it looks like very quickly to um, connect content and feature content and add a quick link. So here under connected content, if we click new, I am going to select my content type. So that can be a catalog item, knowledge, or a quick link. Um, let's say I want to associate or connect uh, a knowledge article. So what I'm able to do is click into knowledge, and then I'm prompted to select what knowledge I'd like to feature. So let's just pretend that, um, let's say direct deposit is a really popular topic within our global uh, talent organization, and they really want that to be connected to their uh, topic in the taxonomy. So we have this direct deposit set up instruction article. I'm gonna go ahead and select that and submit it. So that's now connected to this uh, child topic of, um, that we've created. Um, now let's say we actually want to feature some content. So we talked a little bit earlier about what that um, means. Let me show you the configuration process for that. And then um, ultimately what we'll do is we'll go into this topic page and I'll show you exactly what this looks like. Um, so by default, when you go to feature content, you are able to select from any of the content that you've connected. So that's the article that I just connected around direct deposit. And in a real life scenario, you would likely have a lot more connected content as part of your taxonomy. But just to keep today simple, we've just connected one piece of content and I'm going to go ahead and feature that. Um, and now let's walk through what it looks like to create a quick link. So quick link configuration is also very easy. There's another new button that I'll click here. Um, and just to save us a little bit of time, I've gone ahead and created a quick link in advance. Um, I've created this ADP pay stub quick link, um, but just to give context into how easy it is to create a quick link, essentially what you're doing is you're clicking new, you're adding in a name for your quick link and essentially the URL. So I've just pre-configured or built this ADP pay stub one that we'll be using. I'm going to go ahead and submit that. Okay, so now what we've done, we've cloned the taxonomy, we re relabeled HR to global talent, and we've added a new sample child topic, which is what we're looking at here. We've connected content, featured content, and added a quick link and a banner. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to actually associate this to Employee Center. So on the left filter nav, I'm gonna start typing Employee Center. 
And I'm going to go into portal configuration. And I'm going to change my application uh, scope here too. And if I scroll down here on this page, um, I see this taxonomy area. So we can see by default actually that this um, taxonomy that is associated is that out of the box employee taxonomy. So like I was saying earlier when we were in the slides, this is something um, that you would want to change if you again clone the taxonomy and modify it. Once you're done with that, you would wanna come here, remove that out of the box employee taxonomy from being associated and go back in and add the new one that you cloned and modified. Um, so now if we scroll back down, we can see confirmation that that now is switched to Taxonomy Academy. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to um, duplicate this tab, essentially to refresh that page of our employee center. And um, if you notice, actually, this is reflected now. So that was HR before, that relabel from HR to Global Talent is something that we see here. Um, and then when I click into this mega menu, um, I can see that new child topic that we just created. So I'm gonna go ahead and click into that and we can see exactly what we just built. So we created that new child topic. Here's that browse widget. So we can actually see that content that I associated. So again, that was the article on direct deposit. We can actually see this as featured. So we see this little blue message here and it's at the top. And again, like I said before, in a real life scenario, you would have a lot more content that would be connected to a topic. So there would be a whole series of you know, articles and request items here, and the featured would be at the top, but that's what we see here. And we also see over here on the uh, right, that ADP pay stub quick link. So that's appearing here as well. Uh, the other thing that I wanna show you is actually what it looks like to get that banner to display. So you'll notice that we only see this icon, but we did upload that banner. So let me show you um, how we can adjust that. So I'm just switching my scope here. And what I'm gonna do, I'm logged in as an admin and I'm gonna um, control right click and I'm gonna go into instance options for this widget. And what we can see here is that um, we have some kind of options that are available for configuration for this widget. So we can see here that the primary display is set to icon. So that's actually why we're seeing the icon for this topic page. And the secondary display, which says this will show up for the selected topics below, is banner. So since I did take the time to um, set that banner, I want to show you what it looks like to get that banner to display. So if we come in and we actually um, add our new child topic that we just created, I'm adding that here. And then I will save. Now we see the banner that I just loaded. So that's a very quick tour of kind of what it looks like to clone that taxonomy, modify it, add new items. Um, the other thing that I want to very quickly mention um, is that aspect of employee communication and that widget that Pooja and I talked about earlier. So if you remember when Pooja was walking through curated experiences in slide format, she did mention that that content experiences widget could be, if you are um, an Employee Center Pro customer, something that appears here as well. Um, we're not seeing that here on this topic page because we haven't um, associated any um, you know, content or banner information to that uh, topic in the taxonomy. And um, what we're actually planning for our November session is for a deep dive into how to configure that and really the entire content experiences and content functionality um, that's part of Employee Center. So I just wanted to make a quick note that that was um, what we're planning for next month and that's what we'll be showing how to configure. Um, so now what I think we can do, we have just a couple of minutes left. I can see that we've gotten a lot of uh, questions. Pooja, I'm gonna check in with you to see if, um, if we have any questions that we've gotten that we should uh, start discussing live yet. Yes, um, I see Nikhil typing an answer, but we can take this. Can we associate multiple taxonomies to Employee Center? Right, so the question there is that um, you can build multiple taxonomies, but only one can be associated to um, Employee Center. And as a reminder, again, there is kind of that hierarchy that Pooja described. So you can have, um, you know, topics and um, those topics can have child topics um, and that can be adjusted per the needs of your organization. 
Thanks, Alison. Um, the other question that came up was, um, can the changes be captured in update set or should we make changes, uh, should we make configurations in broad? Um, I can take this and you can probably chime in. Um, our recommendation is always to make changes in sub broad. Um, changes will be captured in update set, but at the same time, we are also recommending customers to make all the changes that they're making in, in their own scoped app. So don't update the out of box taxonomy, always clone it and uh, make the changes in, in, in your own uh, scoped app. And do it in sub broad. Okay, let's see if we have any more. Okay, so there are also knowledge bases and catalog under employee center portal configuration. What's the use of these two if we define everything in taxonomy? So the way I understand it, I think the question is more around, um, there are categories that, that uh, one can maintain in knowledge base and, and, and catalogs. So um, if you're using taxonomy, what's the use of those two? It's a question that has come up many times. Um, from our perspective, we are guiding customers that you may still want to maintain those categories, depending on um, how your governance is, is done across different departments. So you may want different departments to sell, still maintain categories because they may have owners defined at that categories level um, to create content, to give you an example. The taxonomy is more sitting on top of everything and is more associated with just what the end user sees driven out of the portal. So um, um, if you have a truly enterprise-wide services and you have cross-department um, catalogs, then you don't really need to maintain those separate catalog categories, but otherwise we recommend that for ease in governance. I'm looking through some of the other questions and another one that we can answer live. So someone asked if you need HR service delivery professional to use featured content on topic pages. Um, so let me, um, I was gonna share my screen, but actually I, I can talk through this without a visual. So the featured content, so if you're thinking about that browse widget where we essentially featured that um, article, that's something that is available with employee center base. But if you're thinking towards um, what, we were, what we were talking about earlier with that content experiences widget, where you're able to you know, surface that banner information and target that proactively, that is the feature that does require Employee Center Pro. Okay. Just looking through to see if there are any other ones that we may be able to quickly take live. There's a two-part question from, from Vankitation. Um, we may need a little bit of discussion and between the three of us for this, but I want to pick that up because I'm sure a lot of people will have it. Um, the pinning by admin and managers is global. I think I think those roles and those user criteria that we are defining is global, unless we we, we state it to be like localized. Um, well, what do you think? Sorry, can you repeat that question? I was trying to look through um, everything, and I want to make sure I understand. So this, this is that I presume the pinning by the admin uh, slash manager is global. I think it, the question is whether those um, user criteria and the role that we have defined are global rules. Got it. Okay, so they're asking like who basically has access to do that or if they or are they asking if that would appear or not appear to an employee? Um, I guess we can answer it from both angles. Um, I wonder, like from the employee perspective, essentially employees would only see content on a topic page if they already have access to that um, content. So let's say it's like a knowledge article um, that's appearing and associated to that topic. Um, you know, employees would only see that if they have access to it. So let's say you have criteria applied to it using can or cannot read. Um, and if that employee is eligible to view that piece of content, then it would appear for them. But if not, then it would not appear. So I think we've kind yeah. of taken two routes to that question, depending on what the angle was, but. Yeah. Um, I think we are out of time, but a lot of good questions and this was very engaging. For any questions that we were not able to answer, we will get back to you via email later on. 
Yes, I think what we can do, um, we have the access to export all of these questions and we can either, like Pooja said, get back to you on email or what we can do is use these to create um, an FAQ that we can post out to community. So again, we will be back on November 17th. So we look forward to continuing this series and helping you learn more about Employee Center. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone.